Hi, Misha here. And we were pretty quick to do a video on the Brin 2S as soon as it came out because it was really something new. Not as quick to do one on the 2MS, the full release version. You can think of this as a pre production model that was imported in small numbers. And this is the full American commercial version. And it officially replaces the CZ805 S1 or PS1 Bren. Some people call these CZ806s. This is not correct. Bren 2 is the name. The military over in Czech Republic uses the Bren 2A1 in 5.56 with a 14 inch barrel. That's their quote unquote rifle. They use the Bryn 2A2 in 5.56 with an 11 inch barrel. That is their quote unquote carbine. CZ also offers select fire submachine gun commando sized with 8 or in some chamberings 9 inch barrels. Although I cannot find an official Czech military designation, meaning they probably don't really use them. If so, it's in small numbers. While the Czech Republic does not issue the Bryn 2 in 7.62x39, other nations do, including France, interestingly, at least their counterterrorism group, and Egypt. And just because everyone asks, no. The 7.62x39 version does not feed from AK Max. Why? Because for one thing, Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic never adopted the Kalashnikov, so why would they have its mags? And two, if you were to have AK mags fit it, they would be rock and lock, and you would not have the last round belt hole open device. So, yeah. Just putting that out of the way real quick. When the Bryn 2S came in. We got all sizes, 8 inch, 11 inch, and 14. The 14 had the bayonet lug. These were all pistols. You could also get them in 762 by 39. And now with the two MS, these are coming in. So far I've seen 11 and 14, but I'm sure there's 8 as well. And there is going to be a 16 inch barreled carbine but they're just now trickling in in small numbers. There's also, of course, the 76239. And before you ask, no, the 308, the 76280, the Select 5 version known as Bryn 2 B, BR, BN. I think it's BR, sorry. But uh, it's not out yet. A semi automatic version is probably some time off because the Select 5 version is really now just being offered on the military law enforcement market. So. That's probably something for a future year. The point of this video, we're going to compare the new 2MS to my original Bryn 2S. Really no need for test firing this gun. For one thing, it's brand new and I don't want to make a new gun used. But for another, the internals are the same. I checked them out. The trigger pack, the bolt group, the gas piston all look the same. And I'm sure it'll shoot just as well as the 2S, which, yes, Jay and I have put several rounds through. And if, you know, you'd like to see those shots again, hey, here they are. And then we'll come back and start comparing these. Brand new. We've found the Bryn 2S to be 100% reliable, even in the short 8-inch version. So how do these two guns differ? Well, before we get to the guns themselves, let's talk about a couple of accessories. Now, they both come in the same box, 
and they both come with two 30 round mags. The 2S came with this mag here. And interestingly, at least early on, this is the same mag issued by the Czech military. I confirm this with the first hand source. Typical alloy mag. Yeah. The 2MS comes with two of these, which look like Magpul mags, but seem to be made by CZ. Although I have to wonder if they're just Magpul with CZ branding on them. Either way, you get two polymer mags with the 2MS and two metal mags with the 2S. Likewise, both come with a cleaning kit. Here's the one for the 2S, quite large bag. It's got brushes, cleaning rod, oil, and it has the wrench, the torque wrench to, t to remove either your rail panels or your barrel, which you can do by hand. It's only hand tight. The 2MS also comes with a cleaning kit in a much fancier looking case, little zipper case with big CZ letters on it and it the one thing I was kinda concerned about is if they would give you the wrench you know I should have just unzipped this before starting the uh, the camera but hey what fun would that be right Raw, uncut, unedited here for you. <laughs> here you go. Actually, kind of a neat little kit. And yes, they do still give you the barrel slash side puddle wrench, which is great. I was a little concerned they may not. You also get a sight tool, some jags. Although it still doesn't seem quite as complete. For example, smaller oiler as this one here. This is a pretty serious kit. So a more fancy looking kit, more commercial, but a little less detailed. No big deal though. So those are the accessories. The thing that most people are going to immediately key in on is the handguard. But there's one other big difference between the 2S and 2MS. I wonder how many have already realized it or spotted it. Anyway, the handguard first off. Here's the original. We have three screws on the side and three screws on the bottom. And each bottom and side has two M-Lock compatible slots. And this, of course, has this handguard. It only has one M-Lock compatible slot on the side and another on the bottom. And it has more screws. One, two, three, four, five. So this has a total of five screws in the same general area where the other has three. And on the bottom, one, two, three, four, Five. So this has a total of 15 screws in the handguard. I don't know how many you need to remove to take the barrel out. I don't think all of them, but anyway, 15 screws versus <laughs> 9 screws. Okay. This is obviously more of a squared off handguard with more space. This is more of a curvy, wavy, wervy handguard. Designed to be more modular. It also has more of a matte finish, more of a phosphate finish feeling. It's, I'm sure it's not, but and this has more of a gloss type finish. Both come with flip-up iron sights. These are very similar to the ones seen on the 
805, but a little bit different. But there is a difference on the top rail. So I've got a rail cover on mine. But either way, you see it's just a standard under pick rail. However, on the 2MS, this rail is dished in. I assume it's still Picatinny compatible, but it's dished in. I'm not sure why. Maybe weight savings, but you also lose a little bit of real estate up here. A notch where these two interface. I find that really odd. And this too has kind of that rougher, more matte finish. Whereas this one has the slightly... It still has a matte finish on the top, but it's just a little bit smoother. Kind of makes me wonder where the rails are made. Like I said, before the video, I did check out the insides to see if there was anything worth looking at. I, I didn't find anything in the trigger pack that jumped out at me. Both have the out-of-battery safety. Both have the spring-loaded firing pin. Both have the three-position gas regulator. Both have the same three-prong flash hider. Of course, both of these are 11-inch guns. Both have the same stock adapter in the back. I've got a folding brace on mine. Both have the same pistol grip. No storage compartment. And both have the same ambidextrous lower. So I bet most of you have spotted the difference. But, uh... Let's get a look at the other side before we wrap things up. So flipped over. The 2MS still has the shell deflector, which is notched out on the bottom to take the uh, factory stock. If you SBR it, or make it into a carbine. Alright, so the difference, or rather, difference is. Notice this area here, and here. Now look at it on this gun. And it's the same on the side we were just looking at. The 2S has very large noticeable scallops that function as lightning cuts to cut down weight. Even though this is an aluminium receiver, or alloy really, they still remove metal where they could. Because ounces add up to be pounds. And on the 2MS, they did not do that. One must wonder why. It would save them a little bit of machining time. So, maybe a, a little bit in cost. And it doesn't add much weight. However... That adds a bit, and this new handguard setup adds a bit more weight. The 2MS is a few ounces, not many, not many, just a few ounces heavier than the 2S. And that's both as 11 inch pistols. I wonder if, you know, if it's not 
the saving money part. If they wanted to use a thicker receiver because it's a civilian gun, you know, for durability purposes, uh, liability purposes, you know, a heavier receiver. I don't know, it's just, it's just odd. I mean, the reason they went to the new handguard setup is so they can make use the same receiver for pistols and carbines. I think the Bryn 2 looks great with the 11 inch barrel. I think it looks a little derpy with the 14 inch, but originally the 14 inch had a bayonet lug, which is pretty neat, but the newer 14s do not. I think without the bayonet lug to break up the long skinny barrel, it looks more egregious. So when we get to the Bryn 2 MS Carbine, it's going to have a barrel that's 5 inches longer than this, so that would put it out to here. And if you add a longer handguard to compensate, what else you're adding is weight. My concern is by the time they do the carbine, it'll weigh not as much as the 805 carbine, no. But one of the neatest things about the, the Bryn 2 is how light, slim, and trim it is. I'm just afraid, afraid they're adding back weight, bulk. When CZ over in the Czech Republic did so well to trim all the unnecessary fat. So TLDR, the gun went on a great diet and is now pigging out at the KFC buffet. At least potentially so. We'll know when the Bryn 2 MS Carbine comes out exactly what it weighs. And this may just be completely nothing. But I think because this gun is designed to be light and compact, I really like the shorter barrels, the 8, the 11, or even the 14 would be okay. I'm just not sold on a 16, but that's just personal preference. The point of this video is just to share with you the differences. And that seems to be that that's it. That's pretty much it. Handguard, top rail, lightning cuts or lack thereof on the receiver, metal mag versus polymer, and kind of large but plain looking cleaning kit versus small but very nifty. What do I think about these five basic changes? I think the gun will still be as durable and reliable as dependable and fun and accurate. Jay's done quite a bit of accuracy testing with his and has great things to say. But I do think every single change they made here pushes this further away from being a military gun and more into being a sporter gun. And if you count how the 14 inch barrel no longer has a bayonet lug, that's a sixth change. And for people like me, military enthusiasts, we want as close to military as possible. So in objective terms, the 2 MS is no worse, it might even be better. But for the military collector, the 2S still seems to be the ticket. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of a, a front comparison. Trigger pull is really the same. Both have metal hammers. Both have the same non-reciprocating charging handle. Both have extremely smooth bolt travels. Both come with very good backup iron sights. Military grade. And it is nice that both come with two mags and a cleaning kit in a time when so many guns now just come with one mag. So I do appreciate that CZ, and they do pack them very well in a very heavy duty cardboard box. So presentation is still nice. And if I didn't have a Bryn 2S, I would not at all have a problem having the Bryn 2MS. Even though I might look for an original style handguard because I really don't care for the wavy <clears throat> look of this but that gets into personal preference I think other people have stated they actually like it better because this is a more squared off chunky blocking looking handguard 
even if it actually is lighter because of having fewer screws and more open space. Yeah. We haven't brought you a, a Bren video in a while, so it seemed like a good time for another one. If you have a Bren 2 MS or if you have one of the carbines, please let us know what you think. As always, if you could like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and Jay and I both will catch you very soon next time.